This is part five of my lecture on module eight of the Apology of General Science book. In the last part, we looked at how the catastrophist views the geological record. So now we're going to move on and conclude this portion of the lecture by looking at how the catastrophist views the fossil record. Well, the catastrophist view of the fossil record is that remembers that fossilization is the exception, not the rule. Most things, when they die, decay. And in order for things to be preserved, the animal or the organism has to be buried rapidly. This is very reasonable to consider that a worldwide flood would be responsible for a lot of the fossilization that has, occur has occurred since things would have been buried rapidly with a worldwide flood. Let's look at a couple of examples. One is that of fossil graveyards. Now, these only would be possible with a worldwide flood. For example, there's the Caro beds in Africa. Here you will find over 800 billion fossils. And these all have backbones. They're not the, the simple little creatures that the um, uniformitarian says that the world began with. But they're complex creatures and over 800 billion fossils are found in this one location. They were obviously were covered with sediments very quickly. Fossil deposits like this are not formed today. This isn't an, a normal occurrence that this would have happened. But we do find these fossil graveyards common in the fossil record. Another example is the Cumberland Bone Cave in Maryland. There are thousands of fossils in one cave. What's interesting is that these fossils come from dozens of different types of creatures. Now, I don't know exactly what they find there, but the idea... Oh, oh, one more thing here before I go on. These creatures were from different climates. So, like I said, I don't know exactly what's here, but the idea of different climates is you might have a fossil there from like a polar bear and a tiger from Africa. So these very these creatures from very different climates were brought together, buried rapidly, and all fossilized. How? How could this have happened without a worldwide flood? So we see that the catastrophist idea of a worldwide flood really does um, explain these fossils, fossil graveyards. What about the time for fossilization? Well, the uniformitarian said we need millions of years for all these things to be fossilized. But you know what? Fossilization can occur very quickly. It does not require millions of years. We see this in this particular example here of this fish who was fossilized in the middle of a meal. You can see the larger fish eating a big fish. Obviously, this happened very quickly. Fossilization doesn't require millions of years, like the uniformitarianist would say. Also, we have examples of fossils that are very recent, that didn't happen millions of years ago. Here's a water wheel built about 70 years ago, and this has been fossilized through the method of petrification, through the mineral-rich water that had been flowing over it. So this fossil was made very recently. Another one is the boot. That's clearly not a prehistoric fossil, but it contains hardened sediments that encasing bones that were at least partially fossilized. Then you have a hat here. Obviously, again, not prehistoric, but it's as hard as rock because it was petrified. So we see that this process of fossilization, in order to have all these fossils that we have in the fossil record, doesn't require that we have millions of years because the fossilization can occur quite quickly. So that finishes up our outline for today. Again, this is just the first half of Module 8. Next week in our lecture, we'll look at uniformitarianism or catastrophism and ask, which is better, 
which one best supports the data that we have. And we'll look at some of the weaknesses in both uniformitarianism and in catastrophism. This is the end of part five.